what up folks it is nimsticks here and we're pretty much going to cut right to the chase i'm going to be sharing with you photoshop camera uh, a part of a select few that's able to beta the app and it just came out today for us so i'm going to demo it for you I'm not going to be showing you on the iphone i'm actually going to show you on the ipad however the version downloaded on the ipad is the same one for the phone so it doesn't even fit the resolution or the size of the ipad you can tell it's kind of like instagram on ipad if you use that it's definitely the same made of size as it would be on the iPhone. So we are going to jump right into it. I've already been playing around with it a little bit. And as you can see, I'm sharing the device so you can actually see the full interface and everything that you have available to you uh, in Photoshop camera. So I was pretty excited about this because they actually uh, demoed it for us a little bit. I believe it was last year during the Adobe Max conference and that's where you first saw it. And if you want it to be a part of the beta when it came out, then you can sign up after the conference, which I did and you probably got notification maybe a couple of weeks ago that it was gonna be available on the 9th to a select group of folks if you wanted to try it out. So here we are. Now, if you don't know what Photoshop camera is, it is basically like having your Instagram filters, your Snapchat filters, uh, your filters that they now have on Facebook, all within one app with more flexibility in order to kind of just manipulate those photos and enhance them without having to use multiple apps. You have everything right in Photoshop camera. So. If we take a look at the interface here, you'll notice that as soon as I launched it, of course, after you allow it to, you know, accept access to your photos and all of those things, and whether you want location to always be on, you're basically gonna be presented with this type of interface. So down here at the bottom, you have these little diamonds that says, tap to try on a lens. And so when you click on that, it's gonna give you all of these different funky filters that you can apply to your photos. So you can see this one is pretty sweet. And this is a, I think a pop art one. And so there's a couple of different variations for all the different filters. And you simply just kind of swipe to see all of the different ones that you have. So this is two out of five for the little pop one. There's another one that's for pop art. That one's actually pretty sweet. What? That one's pretty dope. Um, five out of five, that's pop art. If we go to portrait, portrait just kind of really gives you just some nice, still shots of yourself like if you were taking just a picture of yourself with a camera and then you got a couple of different ones that you can filter through here which is pretty nice um then we have spectrum look how groovy that looks and at any time you can flip your camera so if i wanted to take a picture and there's really nothing for me to show you over here but let me kind of back up that's like a vase which actually looks pretty sweet I'll show you guys here <laughs> but that actually that actually looks pretty dope Hmm, I might have to come back and snap that. <laughs> All right, there's a couple of them in Spectrum that looks pretty nifty. Look at that one. That one looks pretty awesome. Um, so we got a Billie Eilish filter here. Um, and then some of them you can actually point at the sky. So if I was outside, I can kind of point it at the sky and it will kind of make, you know, a sky. Let me see if I point it up here at the ceiling. So that's just pointed it to like the ceiling in my house. And you can see how that comes across. So that's pretty sweet. So you got a couple different ones here. This one is really nice. Kind of make you look like a oil painting. Yeah, buddy. Uh, let's see what else we got. So we also have a filter that's just for food. So if you want to take pictures of your food, here are some filters that you can use. It will even suggest when you take a picture, if it's a picture of food, to use like this filter. We got some scenery ones. So this will kind of work too. I think some of them better when you're outside. Again, the ones where they really kind of want to filter in the sky, but you got a couple of them there. Blue skies, this might've been the one that I was thinking of. Yeah, where it really kind of puts you with that sky background. And you got a couple of different options there. Look at that nice blue sky. Oh, yeah. This one, Reverie. That's awesome. Look at them shooting stalls. That's dope. Oh, and hot air balloons back there. This is pretty neat. Oh, snap. I like it. And then of course you can click on add more. So when you click on add more, this actually takes you to the lens library. So they don't really consider them like filters. They call them lenses. 
but basically essentially the same thing. But you come to this lens library and from here you can select lenses that you can download. So it automatically comes with a couple of default lenses, but you can browse the library and you can download ones that have been created by other creatives. So you'll notice here, there is the Billie Eilish one. Here's one by Brandon Wolfel, which is a, a neon pulse lens. So if I clicked on that to see more details, it kind of shows me what some of his lenses look like gives me his handle. I can follow him out here on Instagram. Tells me a little bit more about his. And if I want these lenses, all I have to do is go ahead and hit add lens. It'll start downloading and then it allows me to go ahead and open it up. It's added that lens to my lens library. So it'll be part of one of the lenses that I see whenever I use my camera. And here is the neon pulse. And if there's a couple of different variations, you see there's three of these, that one, I like it. That one's sweet too. And there it is, automatically downloaded into the library. So let's go back over here to add more. Again, I can just kind of see what lenses they have. Also, it looks like if you're interested in creating lenses, you wanna be a featured lens creator, that's an opportunity, that's pretty sweet. But you got a different, you got some more, you got some Billie Eilish wings. So it looks like that's a filter that kind of puts the wings on your back when you're taking a picture or after you've taken a picture. Some celestial ones, looks like that's for like the sky. If you wanna put some clouds, a moon back there, some stars, that is awesome. Oh, this one's dope, super size. Cloudy with a chance to giant meatballs, charge up a mundane scenery. That is sweet. All right, so definitely got a lot of lenses out there in the library that you can browse through, you can download. Once you've downloaded your lenses, you can manage your lenses from within the app. So if I click on manage lenses, any of the lenses, including the default ones that come with the app, there they are. I can simply hold down on the three lines and I can kind of move them up where I want them. And that's just gonna rearrange them uh, as far as my options when I first come into my camera to use them. So the ones that I don't use, I can kind of move them towards the bottom. You can also swipe right to left and it will give me the option to delete. Now, the ones that come default, as you notice, it says this lens cannot be deleted, but like the Neon Pulse one that I downloaded, I can swipe right to left and it gives me the option to delete it. So, pretty awesome there. Of course, you can import a photo, and it looks like with any of the lenses, you always have that option to switch your camera back around. Another easy way to get to the lens library is simply by clicking on the globe over in the top left-hand corner, and that'll kind of take me back to the lens library or manage lenses wherever I was last. Clicking on the camera icon takes me back in to my camera. Now you would think that we are done, but we are not done. There is more here to go. So let's see, let's say I take a picture of myself. We're gonna use portrait and I'm gonna go and we're gonna work with that picture. Now you notice when I took the picture, it didn't automatically just stop and put the picture up there. It basically holds the picture. So you can see my picture over here to the right down here at the bottom. So I can continue to use the camera if I want to and take some more pictures. Now when I'm ready to use that picture, I'm just gonna click on it. And so it gives me the option here that I can select it or I can even go over into my camera roll if I wanted to pull a picture in. So you kind of have like your own photo album of just your Photoshop camera pictures that you're taking. And so if I continue to take pictures over and over, all of those will be right here for me to select. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the picture that I took. Oh, okay, I was like, it's blurry, but it's not. So it took a little minute to load and you can see this is the picture that I took. So after you've taken the picture, you don't have to put a lens on it and then take the picture. You can take the picture and you can put the lens on it later. So you'll notice that I have the lenses here and then I can kind of go through some of these and again, clicking on them and swiping gives me the different options of the lenses that I can put to my pictures. And I can do that for any of them. The ones that actually have some motion to it, you can use those. Now, if I wanna turn off the video, notice at the top, it says tap to turn video on and off. So if there's a certain point of this video that I wanna pause because I want that in my image, I can just click on the play button up there, it stops the video and I can capture it just like that or I can continue to just let it play if that's what I want. Again, clicking on any of these lenses down here is just gonna kind of change my photo based upon that lens that I'm clicking on. Now at the top, you got some options. You have this PSX, which is gonna ask you if you wanna go ahead and kind of enhance your photo even more in Photoshop Express, you can do so. If you haven't used Photoshop Express, that is like 
one of the best free photo editing apps you can have on your phone, especially if you're already using like Adobe Creative Suite or you're using Photoshop and you want to just easily be able to move photos in and out of those applications, you want to get Photoshop Express on your phone. So it asks you if you want to go ahead and import that there and then you can do some other funky stuff with it. Also up here, you got like this little enhance one, which it would just kind of auto correct um, your photo basically. So if I click on it, you notice it did just a minor adjustment. Looks like it just brought up the exposure, maybe the brightness a little bit. If I don't like what it did, all I do is click it and it turns it back off. If I really want to get fancy, I got some more options over here by clicking on that icon to the far right, it gives me some adjustments. So notice now down at the bottom, I have some options to adjust like my shadow, my highlights, clarity, clicking on shadow or shadow is already on by default. I just swipe my finger to the right and that will adjust my shadows, bringing them up or to the left, taking my shadows down. And I can literally go through using these adjustments to fine tune my photo. I can go over to highlight and I can adjust my highlights or remove some of them. Do the same thing with clarity vibrance like come on come on we're doing a thug thizzle right now and we have not left the photoshop camera app it's all right in here folks it's all right up in here folks adjust the blacks and the saturation if i please yeah bada boom bada bing so that is pretty pretty dope and again if you have pictures already in your camera uh in your camera roll you can bring those over as well so it doesn't have to be a photo that you've actually taken with the photoshop camera you could have just took it with your regular camera and you can bring it up in here and then you can do your thug thistle with it um at any time if you want to share you can click on share because the whole thing is like okay i got this beautiful photo i don't put these lenses on it now i want to share it with the community or with Instagram or Snapchat or whoever else. So you're gonna click on that share button. It gives you some options and it's best to pick whatever option you feel is necessary for the social media platform that you want to post it on. And it'll go ahead and crop it. You can also manually crop your photo if you want to. You got that option. You can go ahead and hit next and bam, right there. You could take it into Facebook. You can put it into Instagram. You can send it to somebody via messages. You can also click on Lightroom and it'll put it in Lightroom if you have Lightroom installed on your phone, which you should, and then you can even enhance it more. And then of course you can click on more and you got some other options over there that you can do with this. How a beautiful is all of that. And then of course I can delete it. If I just want to save it down to my computer or not my computer, but to my phone, to my camera roll, I can click on the download icon and it'll save it there. So, tell me that's not fire that is fire if there's photos that i've taken i'm not going to do anything with them i don't want them just sitting in my photoshop studio like album of course you can click on them and you can delete them and that's really super easy all i did was click on the icon of the check next to the lightroom icon at the top that gives me the option to start selecting things and then i can hit the trash can if i want to get rid of some stuff so how do you feel about that I feel pretty grand about that. I think this is an awesome, awesome app. I think it streamlines a lot of things. It, it definitely requires you not to have additional apps on your phone. Like you don't have to have Photoshop Express. You don't have to have Lightroom. You don't have to have other apps like Visco and stuff. This actually does a pretty good job of giving you some awesome lenses and giving you some adjustments that you can make to your photo without having to use anything else. If you wanna use anything else, you got it right there at your disposal. And as you can see, they've integrated it so that you can easily start your photos here, use the lenses, make some adjustments, and then take them over into Lightroom or Photoshop Express, whatever you fancy. But other than this, this is really all I need. Ah, look, we got some additional options there. So if you click on the ellipse at the top of those three buttons, already I can pick the aspect ratio that I want. I can do a little three, four situation, a nine, 16, go back to a three, four if I want to. This looks like flash. So I'm on an iPad, so it doesn't have a front facing flash, but if your phone has a front facing front, facing flash then clearly looks as if you can go ahead and enable that or you can turn it off 
Then we got some settings. Now this is where it gets jostling. So we got some preferences that we can turn on and off. Do we want to save them to our camera roll? We got an energy saver mode, which is pretty awesome. If we want to implement that, we got some tutorials. This is the tutorial that you're most likely going to see when you first download the app itself. And it kind of just walks you through four little quick kind of tutorials guiding you, letting you know, yo, this is what's going down here. You can suggest a feature, ask for help, report a bug, do whatever all you want to do with all that other stuff. So all of that is in your options there. So I am pretty excited about this. I'm definitely going to be using this. I'll probably be starting some photos on here, just using this and then taking those over into Photoshop, into Lightroom to kind of fine tune them. But the integration of this with all the other apps, I can only think of the wonderful things that I'm going to be able to do. And you can only imagine how many more lenses is actually going to be uploaded. Now, granted, when you first download this app, and I'm not sure when it's actually going to become public in the app store for all uh, individuals to download. But once you do, you notice there's really a decent list of lenses already provided within the app. So you got a lot to work with and there's clearly some other lenses that I can download that I have not. So we definitely got a lot of options as far as lenses, but the fact that almost anyone can become a featured creator of the lenses means that they're going to have an extensive library of lenses. So definitely not a shortage of these that you can use for your photos. So I'm super stoked to start using this and I'm going to start using this. Hopefully you guys are excited about it as well. Uh, keep an ear out as to when it's actually going to launch in the app store for all users might be fairly soon, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end the video there. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know how you feel in the comment section about this particular app. Do you think it's something that you would use? Are you excited to see it? I know I am. So hopefully if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see some wonderful creations that I got coming forth on this bad boy. And in the meantime, be nice, be safe, take care of your loved ones. More importantly, take care of a stranger whenever you can. It's your girl Nimsticks signing off. Until next time, be nice.